Thank you for joining us today on HXGN TV. I'm your host, Laura Beth Ezel, and today we're discussing the art of rule breaking with Kaylin Sims and Dan Retzer. Now, they're with Hexagon Safety and Infrastructure. Kaylin is the Senior Vice President over the Technology and Innovation Department, while Dan is the Senior Vice President managing Hexagon Safety and Infrastructure's Product Center. Thank you both for joining me today. My pleasure. My pleasure. All right, so you guys are not rule break, you know, you're not rule breakers, but we're going to talk about that today in terms of incorporating innovation and taking new innovative ideas and how to incorporate that into Hexagon's products. You know, so first, can you describe, you know, what you consider to be the key ingredient to innovation? Kaylin, we'll start with you. Sure, Laura. I think uh, one of the key points is we need to be flexible and adaptable to change. I think it's fair to say we're all facing a lot of change mm -hmm. in the technology landscape as well as the, you know, the world we live in. We have to constantly look down the road and readjust our strategy for those trends that are just mere specs on the horizon. Right, right. Dan? Well, yeah, I think picking up on that, that topic of change, you know, for me, I think change always leads to a certain amount of disruption, mm -hmm. you know, so there's chaos, but disruption itself also leads to opportunities. And I think fundamentally for innovation to be successful is you have to somehow ride that wave of change and start translating it into those different opportunities that disruption provides. Right, change management. Yeah, change all, management, Everybody absolutely. deals with it. So in each of your roles, you know, you're seeking out new innovative, you know, opportunities and, and ways to implement this innovation, you know, into Hexagon's products. What changes in technology are you seeing, you know, that will impact our customer base soon? Dan? Well, certainly we hear a lot about the Internet of Things, mm -hmm. and I think obviously that's sort of becoming the new defining paradigm for us going forward, but it's even beyond that now. It's, it's now the Internet of Things platforms. So these are the, the, it's the glue, if you will, that kind of holds all the different uh, devices and the, the, the protocols and the paradigms, ensuring that the Internet of Things operates. And, and I think a layer on top of that is really now getting into security. I mean, we can't have discussions about uh, mobility and cloud and analytics really without having a discussion about security. So these adaptive security architectures that are really coming hand in hand, um, I think that's really where we're going to be seeing a lot of investment in some of the defining technologies to come. Yeah, and just adding on to what, what Dan said, I think the device mesh is another trend which um, is really affecting everything we do. This is not a new trend. I think we're all very familiar with the wide variety of devices and applications flowing data into our organizations, yeah. but it continues to grow exponentially, and we need to constantly adjust how we're addressing the device mesh. Uh, the device mesh actually drives another trend, which is ambient user experience, or mm -hmm. ambient UX. Mm -hmm. And what that is, it's, it's really a user-centric design that enables information to be displayed at the right place, at the right time, in the right context, and on the right device. So it's essential that the user experience that our customers have flows very seamlessly as they go from device to device and application to application. So how do we take these ideas and implement them into our products? Well, I have the, the exciting job of looking at the trends and the challenges that we have and executing a strategy to address them through innovation. So in other words, incubating new technologies that really deliver to our customers what they need when they need it. Once um, we've incubated a new product to the point where we call it a minimum viable product, mm -hmm. I then work closely with Dan to do what we call blend the line mm -hmm. and to pass the ball over to the operational side of the house, which Dan can speak to. Right, and I like to think that my job's pretty exciting too, um, <laughs> kind of dealing with this, you know, going from the, the newborn incubated uh, technology into more of the unruly teenager side of things. <laughs> uh, you know, it definitely does present its own uh, challenges, but again, the point is, is that it's one thing to sort of innovate and and sort of create the plan and the technology and everything else, but then you have to industrialize it. Right. Um, so I think that overall, the you know the way that our process flows is starting from idea through ideation through innovation, and then really getting into a, a format where it can be taken to market. You know, no company wants to waste time or have their employees wasting time, money, you know, resources. So. Um, what should we be investing our time in moving forward? Well, from my perspective, 
the three primary goals on the innovation side are, number one, we really need to continue to find ways to reduce the total cost of ownership mm -hmm. of our solutions for our customers. We also need to continuously modernize our technology stacks because, as we were just discussing, the trends continue to change and evolve, and we need to be able to adapt to those. And then finally, I'll go back to user experience. It's very critical that our user experience is tailored to the specific roles and the needs of each customer. And we spend quite a bit of time focusing uh, with our customers on understanding their business processes, their challenges, their pain points, so that we can provide a richer user experience. Yeah. Well, and, and again, you know, I've talked about security before. Uh, making sure that we're focusing on the best ways to build the most secure products and really um, take those forward and ensuring that our customers are protected and the customers of our customers are protected. That's absolutely the number one focus. Mm -hmm. um, but I would also say behind that is, again, leveraging a lot of other technologies such as automation to really industrialize our process. I think that you know, the, the more and more that we start moving into bringing these innovations into the real world and into the market, it's really important that we have um, built a really good process around it to ensure that we have repeatable, repeatable results and secure results time after time. So how is Hexagon Safety and Infrastructure you know, pushing the envelope when it comes to adopting new technology? We're doing this in many different ways. I mean, we're 100% we're committed to taking our products, our solutions, and our services to the next level and investing in and pushing the envelope mm -hmm. towards the future. Uh, one thing I'd like to highlight is that we very much collaborate across the Hexagon divisions um, through Hexagon Ventures. So we, we work with Hexagon Ventures on technologies that can be incubated and applied to different solutions that cross the various Hexagon divisions. Yeah, and, and you know, you'll be hearing a lot about this, I think, this week about hackathons. Um, we just concluded the uh, final round for our, our 2016 first ever global hackathon and uh, really excited about how we can take those results forward um, you know, into innovation and into that cycle. But there's some really, really cool stuff that's coming out of the hackathons. Just great disruption, great ideas, and great collaboration. And these are ideas within the employee base? Correct, these mm -hmm. have actually been percolated up. Our employees working over a period of uh, two to three days to really come up with some great ideas and actually build solutions around mm -hmm. those ideas, which is really exciting stuff. Which we will take several of them you know, right. into Absolutely. our products and, and yep. they will become part of our solutions. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so okay. watch this space. That's right, that's right. And that's breaking the rules, doing something a little different within right. your own employee base to come up with some ideas. You know, so uh, Dan, starting with you, you know, how do we help our customers adopt this new technology or, or transition to it? We, we mentioned about change management. Yeah, you know, so one of the challenges that we always face is, is this sort of lag between innovation and, and getting it in mm -hmm. the hands of customers. And, and really the way to do that in, in modern software is through speed and through agility. So we're actually, we're bringing that cycle of release and innovation down from what would have been typically several months to sometimes mm -hmm. years to get product out mm -hmm. to bringing it down to several months and, and if possible even shorter than that. So again, the agenda here is to get innovative changes in the hands of our customers quickly, but kind of the flip side of that, that's an awful lot of change to manage, mm -hmm. right? So what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to make sure that our customers also have the tools and processes that, that we're helping to build to make the updates and to make the application of these new technologies a lot simpler than they are today. And the other thing, Laura, is it's really important in, to get our customer buy-in to new technology is to include them in the innovation process. And we work very hard to do that. We include them in uh, stakeholder meetings, in the requirements definitions. We let them look at prototypes. We have focus groups. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have a focus group going on with our user experience team in the zone. So I hope yep. that uh, our customers have an opportunity to go by and see them. But the key is not to just introduce a new product at the very end of the cycle and right. say, here you go. <laughs> we want to get their input through every step of the process because at the end, it's too late to go back and right. redesign it. So yeah. we work very hard to include them throughout the, in the innovation process. Right, yeah, being able to sit down the, hands on. Yeah, and that's one of the core concepts mm -hmm. around agility is being able to involve customers early through the mm -hmm. process and really just kind of make mm -hmm. them involved. Right. I mean, that's really what we mean when we say agile development and stakeholder involvement. Yep. Okay, 
Well, thank you both. This has been great information. You, we will consider you not rule breakers, but definitely breaking the rules and trying to find new innovative ways to integrate these, you know, these ideas, you know, into into our products. And we may break a few rules together. Okay. Yeah, yeah we're, right. we're, we're doing. We'll it. keep an eye on you. We'll keep All it right. off the air then. <laughs> well, we'd like to thank our guests for joining us today. And for more on Hexagon Safety and Infrastructure, you can go to hexagonsafetyinfrastructure.com. And for more on HXGN TV or to watch additional episodes, you can go there to hxgntv.com. Thank you for joining us.